time, Nandiji. And yes, 2016 is complete. And now we step into 2017. On the macro levels, there are a lot of disappointments. There are, however, hope. there is, however, hope. And if we consider that all that which is good and bad and ugly begins from within ourselves and we have a way to making sure that 2017 is a year of momentum for each one of us, the year in which we are able to set into place the foundations set into place, all that is required to enable us to perform optimally, to create a grand reality of life. It's all within. And so, it's interesting. Um, while I flew back from India, uh, I was watching, I was listening to uh, Steve Jobs, Stanford speech. Over 60 million people have downloaded and listened to it. And uh, it is very interesting to what he said and what he mentioned. And one of the things he mentioned, that the, he mentions three stories. And the first is when he drops out of college and instead op opts to take a calligraphy course, which is not really connected to anything that he could have possibly thought of to make a living. And then when he was unceremoniously kicked out of Apple, the company he founded, on how at that point in time, after a while he realized, now he didn't have the burden of having anything to carry and he could start afresh, anew. And then the third was understanding that every day you could ask yourself, uh, if today is the last day ever, are we really doing what we are meant to be doing? Now, these three dimensions of thought is uh, very much yogic. So today, what I would like to mention is we, I would like to go chakra by chakra. If you have a pen and paper, or if you can make note of what I'm going to say, it would be good because I intend to come out with a series of little yogic tips that uh, could help in uh, opening the pathway of being a yogi. Now, what do you mean by saying being a yogi? It means that our mind is cosmically connected. We are the spirit having the human experience. So when we talk of our yogic mind, it's that of Steve Jobs, it's that of Rumi, it's that of Albert Einstein. So let's begin with what we could do to attain this higher layers of consciousness that is within each one of us in our seeking and in our doings. So the first is the root chakra. So all yoga is Tantra. Tantra means connecting the cosmic to the earth, connecting the infinity to reality, connecting that light to the body. So when we do yoga, it almost instantly wakes us up to a greater potential. So the first is get started doing yoga. Now, most times we put away doing yoga thinking we need to go to a yoga studio to doing yoga. But the truth is no. We can actually simply get started by doing even sun salutations. And when we start doing sun salutations, we begin to start experiencing the benefits of yoga 
and we do not have to depend on anyone to be able to do our yoga, our daily yoga. So when we do our daily yoga, understand that when we stimulate the root chakra, the mola bandha, we are awakening a powerful energy within ourselves to move our momentum through the day. The root chakra is Ganapati, Ganesh. The root chakra is depicted as the elephant, the elephant headed deity. That elephant represents the huge primary energy that is awake within us. The human body represents this preciousness of the birth. So, when we get started with our yoga, when we get started with our prayer, put our hands together and pray to Ganapati, the Lord of the Root Chakra. And as we pray to the Lord of the Root Chakra, let go of the problems we have before us, the challenges, the opportunities, and uh, allow Ganesh to take over. Imagine if you wish that there's a coconut and that coconut represents our own head, all that we think we know. Crack it, imagine, cr imagine that you're crying it. Crack it and let go. When we are doing a sun salutation, work the root chakra. Ideally, even just with a bandha, that is the lock at the root chakra as you're doing your sun salutation and your breath. If you have the mantra, it would be even more beautiful, even more powerful. But this is one, one area where you could get started. Now, when we start working from the root chakra, we also understand that we are living in a rat race, at least most of us. And it's time to step out of the rat race. It's time to crack, to crack that which we have been doing on a mundane basis every day, mechanically. It's time to break free. It's time to say, hey, am I doing that which inspires me? Am I doing that which motivates me? Am I working, which I call is play, is my holiday? So that also is the root chakra energies. Ask yourself this one question. Every day, are you running the rat race or are we enjoying ourselves every moment? doing what our heart wishes, our heart is aligned to. So the first step is the root chakra, okay? Now, above the root chakra is the guru chakra above the navel. This is our siddha wisdom. So in the root chakra, in each of the chakra, there is a quality of timelessness that allows us to define time. 2016 is over. Now let's call it timelessness. 2017 is time. So every chakra has a specific quality of timelessness and the timelessness is God, the timelessness is source, the timelessness is consciousness and time is the reality. So through each chakra, we would want to work with a timelessness. So in that way, through timelessness, we define time. So the next chakra is above the navel, the Guru. Who are our first Gurus? The moment we begin to pray to our Guru, connect to our Guru, we are stepping into timelessness and asking timelessness to guide our time. So the first is our two palms. Our left is a mother, our right is a father, our father and mother, our mother and father. The first gurus, rub your palms together. Feel that you are, we are receiving the blessings of our first gurus, our mother and father, and receive the blessings. Next, breath itself is a guru. 
press your left big toe down and take a deep inhale to the left and just be aware of a breath and exhale slowly by pressing the left big toe likewise press the big right toe down take a deep inhale and exhale to the right do this a couple of times by doing this we are balancing the left brain and the right brain when the left brain and the right brain is balanced our thinking comes from a state of harmony when our thinking comes from a state of harmony we are the genius so breath itself is a guru then comes the next which is all the other gurus who have opened the doors for us if you read the bible christ is a guru all the beings who have influenced us they are the gurus put your hands together rub our palms feel the blessings of all the gurus all the masters and as in timelessness ask them let the masters guide our every thought and receive the blessings now the masters wake up the inner guru and that inner guru is once again that root fire the root energy that climbs up above the navel and climbs up as mother kundalini goes on climbing up that inner guru mother kundalini is powerful and this is why we do yoga to awaken the inner guru and to climb through layers of consciousness now when we have woken up our inner guru that is wisdom from within we are guided beings now we begin to understand that everything is our guru all the realities are our guru reality itself is our guru so that's the dimension above the navel so when you're doing a sun salutation you could take a deep inhale from the root chakra block it move the energy up above the navel think of the gurus whom we may have and exhale slowly to the third eye invoking their presence in our life that's timelessness the sacredness of timelessness is the guru and when you allow them allow the gurus to define our thoughts we are utilizing timelessness to define time then comes the heart chakra when you come to the heart chakra there is a power an empowerment when we are not attached to anything and that empowerment is even more powerful when we understand ourselves to being love being love means being the sun being whole and complete now when we are not attached to anything especially to the outcome of anything and we are simply from the heart now we are beginning to access universal wisdom which is the heart chakra so you might take a simple mantra a simple mantra like the mantra like ram 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 a mantra like that very simple mantra and how do you crack conditioned love and enable that to be unconditional love we understand ourselves as the infinite cosmic being we understand the divine being being the 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 one who is in our body who is enshrined and we also are within ourselves knowing that our shrine is with the is the heart chakra so you could just say the mantra rama 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 and expand yourself to that infinite 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 being from the heart and then you could say the mantra again and feel that we are that enshrined divinity within ourselves the meaning of namaste and then that divine light enshrined within us so it is 
a worship of ourselves, but it's also understanding the worship of all the living beings. It's the worship of every being. And the moment we step into the unconditionality of the heart chakra, the universal door opens in the form of higher wisdom. Then comes the next dimension, which is the throat chakra. Now, most of us on the pathway to yoga, on the pathway to meditation, on the pathway to the awake journeys, understand that we are living several lifetimes within one lifetime. Several lifetimes. And you ask God, hey God, why me? Why? I thought this pathway to light was just smooth. But how is it that I am seeing, experiencing so many challenges in, our, in my life? And that's a normal question because when the soul wakes up, the soul says, I am, I am, I am. The body and mind says, me too. So the body and mind, which is karma, has to complete itself within one lifetime. So within one lifetime, we are experiencing so many, 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 many uh, challenges and things to, for us to complete it. So come to the throat chakra and say a Siva mantra like Om Namah Sivaya. And feel the throat chakra. The throat chakra is where all the layers and layers and layers of karma of millions of years is stored in the throat chakra. When you say Om Namah Sivaya, focus on the throat chakra, you're making life a lot more easier. You're surrendering all the karmic realities that is springing up to Lord Siva who dissolves it. And when that is dissolved, now a crown chakra wakes up. So the throat chakra, you might want to say a mantra, Om Namah Sivaya, Om Namah Sivaya, Om Namah Sivaya, Om Namah Sivaya. And when you say this, you're focusing it on your throat chakra and raising out all that which is blocking us, all that which is withholding our true potential, all the karmic stuff that was of the past life, you're converting it into opportunities, much like Helen Keller. Then comes the crown chakra. The crown chakra is where timelessness truly is timelessness. In other words, when you open the crown chakra, that's when we step into the meditative zone of timelessness. And when we are in the timelessness, our mind is like the sky without the clouds. The cloud itself is thought. From here, studies show on meditation all the benefits, superior focus, phenomenal memory, inspired thinking, heightened creativity. All these are the benefits of the crown chakra awakening. So for the crown chakra awakening, you could do it without the mantra that is just basically taking away all thoughts allowing thoughts to flow and simply allowing thoughts to disappear. Or utilize a mantra. Utilizing a mantra, in my opinion, is a lot better because it gives you a state of joy. It also gives you an objective of whom you're connecting to and you know if you're connecting to God, there is an entity that you are connecting to and that entity of the infinite you're connecting to and that entity of infinite is gives you the source of happiness, bhakti. And nothing could be more superior than the love of God, the love of consciousness. So, to utilize the, to get the, to utilize, to to you to work the to work the crown chakra, you might want to utilize the mantra Siva 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 Siva. Simple mantra Siva 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 Siva. C is the spirit. E is the goddess. Sa C, spirit. Va, Va is the goddess experience. A ah is the infinite God, infinity. Siva, 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 Siva. So close your eyes and feel all the crowns, all the blossoms, all the petals of your crown chakra blossoming. 
Also wenn du mal 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 Put your hands up and connect to the infinite sky. You can close your eyes and imagine that you're connecting to the infinite sky. You're reminding yourself that we are the infinite beings having this finite moment. We are the spirit having the experience. The moment we have reminded ourselves constantly that we are the spirit having the human experience, there is no limit that can hold us back. In the depth of timelessness is understanding the efficacy of meditation. You could attain all this even through yoga. Whatever I mentioned through, you could attain it through your sun salutations. But you could also sit down and simply go through chakra by chakra by chakra and go up to the crown chakra. And then finally comes the third eye. The third eye is the doorway to awakening grace of focus grace of the gurus so you might want to look into the third eye and say the mantra ah three times look to the third eye say the mantra ah, ah. saying ah feel the light in the third eye open and feel that you are we are meditating there in the third eye that light that you're seeing is our own higher self meditating in the third eye a cave that we have at all times ah. Put your tongue backwards and say the same ah through the resonance of the ah through the third eye. By putting a tongue backward, this is a advanced form of yogic technique. By deploying this, almost in a moment, we are shifting our vibratory field to a higher dimensional vibratory field. And when our vibratory field is shifted, Realities do respond to a higher vibratory field simultaneously. So let's look into the third eye, tongue backward. Rub your palms together. Feel the blessings of the infinity. Feel the blessings of timelessness. Feel the blessing, the blessed time together coming and receive the blessings. So this leaves us with this leaves us with the first dimension of what we mentioned. We took the calligraphy course. We can designing uh, the <clears throat> the fonts he says that he could bring that art that he learned into the actual practical realities. And this is why Mac is preferred by artists, because it was created by an artist. Now, he did not know about this before. He simply did it. And that's heart work. Whenever we do heart's work, we don't know why we are doing it, but we allow the dots to connect. The second is, the worst possible things do happen in life more like a teaching and when we get whacked by it the first is are we able to detach ourselves are we able to climb above that are we able to let go and see the bigger picture and that comes from detachment that comes from being unconditional love so in other words even if we fall we rise again fast we bounce back a million times stronger and then the third is Understanding our own breath and time as that which has a shelf life and knowing that timelessness 
the breath beyond breath and light is eternal. So when we wake up from understanding that we are the spirit having the human experience, we live each day as though it is our last day. We work from our heart and every moment we are in a state of joy, enjoying all that we do. So Divine Beings, 2017 unfolds for us as a colossal time of consciousness for each one of us to access. When we access consciousness, there's no limits to what we can attain. Imagine a million Steve Jobs, imagine a million Einsteins, imagine a million Mahatma Gandhis. We can and we will be able to negate all the shortcomings of ignorance, all the shortcomings of even ignorant leaders. We will collectively be able to consolidate ourselves into the we, the powerful structure of the we as consciousness. So divine beings, namaste to you, namaste to each one of you. A great grand 2017 in mastery of consciousness, in the joys of our journey, in the happiness of our doings. Gratitude, namaste.